There's been a lot of chatter about the Toronto Raptors potentially joining the Damian Lillard sweepstakes, and news has come out that the Raptors are interested, but not specifically for superstar point guard Damian Lillard. As news has come out, the Raptors are interested in acquiring Tyler Hero in a deal that would facilitate Dame go into the Miami Heat. So we'll discuss that, including a bunch of anonymous Toronto Raptors personnel dropping some nuggets on the Raptors offseason moves, the reports, the rumors, and all of that. So lots of stuff to break down without further ado. Let's jump to the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is Toronto Raptors being interested in Tyler Hero. Now, Tyler Hero is a name that we've heard pop up in the past in terms of a guy that Masai Ujiri, Bobby Webster, the Raptors front office have been interested in, particularly when the Raptors uh, had Kyle Lowry on the team and then had a little sign and trade with Miami sort of planned out to send uh, Kyle Lowry after his last season with the Raptors down to Miami. We ended up acquiring Precious Achua and Tyler Hero didn't end up coming to Toronto. And there's a lot of smoke about the Raptors choosing Precious over Tyler Hero. Lots of different stuff. We're not sure nothing's been validated on that front but the raptors have been linked for tyler hero for a very long time and news has come out today that the toronto raptors can also be added to the list of teams that have expressed exploratory interest in acquiring hero as a part of a multi-team trade talks between the blazers and heat involving damian lillard so that's coming from mike scotto of hoops type and tyler hero is an interesting piece because he's a guy that certainly would fit perfectly around our core sort of assets right here at this moment. I mean, you look at his stats for last season, Tyler Hero is a guy that averaged 20 points per game, five rebounds, four assists, shot 38% from the three-point line on a pretty decent volume, 44% from the field. He's a guy that's not horrific on defense, but wouldn't be called a major asset on the defensive end either. You know, he was playable in the NBA Finals during deep playoff runs, all those types of things. Not this past NBA Finals, he had broken wrists talking back to the bubble but Tyler Harrow's an interesting piece because if you look at our current roster right and Scotty Barnes Pascal Siakam Jakob Pertle even Dennis Schroeder now at this point there's not a ton of shooting so bringing a guy like Tyler Harrow can shoot off the dribble can knock down spot up threes can create for himself right he's not just a 3 and D guy he can slash pretty well as well we've seen it in games against Tyler Harrow where he just starts cooking our defenders and going into the lane and finishing with both hands He's a really all-around solid offensive player. So the Toronto Raptors need players along that sort of lines that, you know, can knock down shots around to Scotty Barnes, you know, space the floor and create their own buckets. Because we definitely know that the Raptors struggled at times in the half-court offense to get things going. And Tyler Harrell would certainly be a major help along those lines. But you look at our current roster construction and I've not, I don't have a real clue of what Tyler Harrow's value is out there on the open market because he's a dude that is young, puts up very solid scoring numbers, has been an asset on a very strong Miami Heat team over the past five seasons, but he just signed a very lucrative contract, you know, one of those max rookie extensions. So there's talks that the Brooklyn Nets specifically would want assets attached if they had to take on Tyler Harrow's contract, which I found fairly interesting, but maybe his open market value especially with the cap changes and the restrictions that are going to be coming on now if you go over the luxury tax maybe his open market value won't be that high but looking at the toronto raptors is currently constructed because i don't know if we'd have to give up that many serious assets to acquire hero or if we get other pieces involved if we sent out salary sent out different players but basically tyler hero plays the same position as gary trent jr who's a guy that a lot of people imagine to be a starter for next season and there's already a little inkling of drama going on right now because Scotty Barnes wants to be a point guard and we just brought in Dennis Schroeder. So Schroeder's the sixth man for this team and talked about being a leader for the squad, talked about how he believes he's a starting caliber point guard in today's NBA. And say we run our most talented lineup there as, as is as of right now without Tyler Hero getting involved. It's Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Jakob Pertl. We'll see if those things change. Maybe you can make an argument for Schroeder over Gary Trent, given how poorly Trent finished the season last year. But I'd imagine most Raptors fans would agree those are our top five guys here at this point. So that makes Schroeder your backup PG. And then you bring in a Tyler Hero, who, again, doesn't give you that much more depth at the point guard spot, but is another guard that would he be playing behind Gary Trent Jr.? Would he be starting over Gary Trent Jr.? Right? Would Scotty Barnes be the three at this point? What happens with our lineups here at this point is really the question mark, was really what would be happening with this team. And Tyler Hero is also making a lot of money, as mentioned, signed that rookie max contract. So if we're bringing him in in terms of his deal, in terms of his money, 
right? The Raptors are already in a little bit of a cap crunch, and we discuss this a bunch regarding the Fred Van Vliet drama, him going to the Houston Rockets, him going down to that squad. Raptors fans not wanting to pay him $30-plus plus million per year. Tyler Hero coming in on another big salary. That's going to be so- something that's tough to manage, especially with extensions potentially coming for Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi, and Pascal Siakam. So we'll see what happens along those lines. It's uh, Tyler Hero is the better player right now in comparison to Gary Trent Jr., just in terms of what they produced over the years. But Gary Trent Jr. is certainly a better defender and hasn't really been used to an extent where we've seen him blossom into his full potential so the the debates could be had objectively you have to let go the root of tyler hero right now just in terms of their comparison on court but i don't know i'm a, i'm still very high in gary trent jr and don't think it's a necessary need to bring in an upgrade at the shooting guard position but tyler hero is a guy that's expressed how much he uh, likes toronto sent when asked uh, on twitter about his favorite city of planes besides miami listed toronto there directly so maybe he'll end up coming it's cool that he already likes the city, he's already interested in the team and all those types of things. So the Raptors have been linked to him in the past, so keep your eyes peeled for the Raptors potentially becoming a third team in the Damian Lillard sweepstakes and maybe getting some assets on top of it if Damian's L- L- sorry, hit Damian Lillard's contract, Tyler Hero's contract is a bit of a negative. So let me know what you guys think about the possibility of acquiring Tyler Hero. The next thing we're taking a look at is anonymous Raptors personnel speaking out on the uh, whole offseason for the Toronto Raptors. And Again, this comes from Keith Smith, who's a guy that a reporter went down to Summer League, chatted with a bunch of teams, a bunch of personnel from different teams, and released some nuggets. What he's been hearing, the chatter that's going on back and forth. You know, when you're in person with people, they always let a little bit of information loose. And he broke down an article and specifically taking a look at what he had to say about the Toronto Raptors. And these are the things he's heard. So basically, he was my workout coach uh, when, oh, that's uh, the incorrect, uh, there we go. Uh, signing Dennis Schroeder wasn't quite a must sign, but it was close. We just don't have a lot at that position. We're fortunate for our forwards can ha- all handle the ball and do a lot of the playmaking, but we still need someone who's more of a true point guard. And Dennis gives us that guy. So that's an interesting quote there. Wasn't a necessity because obviously Scotty Barnes, Pascal, heck, even OG wants to do it a little bit more next season. They're all capable dribblers, but having a natural point guard is needed. You need a guy that sort of is a naturally built point guard. Some might argue Scotty Barnes is that guy, but until it's proven, until we've seen a season of Scotty Barnes running the point, right, having a starting caliber point guard on your team is very valuable. So it wasn't essential, right? So they're letting it be like, oh, maybe we could run Scotty Barnes in the PG, but having someone like Dennis Schroeder makes a lot of sense there. Uh, another thing he heard, uh, Keith Smith heard, is that I understand you think Jalen McDaniels is just adding an extra forward to an already crowded mix, but sometimes the value of a player and the cost are just something that you can't pass up on, and we're happy to have him as part of the Toronto Raptors. So basically, this Raptors personnel is coming out and saying the exact same thing I said on the Toronto Raptors, uh, the video we uh, I put out reacting to uh, the Jalen McDaniels signing. Sure, he fills a position that's already filled by the Toronto Raptors. We have a lot of 6'9", athletic wings, all those types of stuff. But the value you're getting for a guy like Jalen McDaniels, you couldn't pass that up. Two-year deal, you know, on the, the biannual exception for a dude that, you know, for Charlotte, was a very solid 3 and D player, didn't get utilized that well for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's worth taking that risk. So I'm fully in agreement with this uh, anonymous Raptors personnel. When all the Another thing uh, Keith Smith heard is that Scotty Barnes and Grady Dick are our future along with Jakob Perto. Not because we're down on anyone else, but those guys are all signed for longer than two seasons. That's kind of stability we want because the rest of the roster is sort of in transition. That trio is a group that we can build with. And that I found that fairly interesting. Now, obviously, Scotty Barnes, even in a Damian Lillard package, it's unlikely he's going to get dealt. The Toronto Raptors are very high on him. Just last summer, they wouldn't trade him for KD. Scotty Barnes is the future of this roster. Grady Dick was just signed as a rookie. Don't expect him to be in trade talks. And Jakob Pertl just signed a long-term deal. So it makes sense why, the why behind that sort of message. But the fact that he said, you know, they're not down on anyone. They're not trying to sell off of Pascal Siakam. Right? OG Ananobi and Pascal being in their contract situations up in the air. The Raptors are trying to feel out what they're going to do, pick a direction for their future with both OG and Pascal Siak. This is what all the rumors that have been percolating throughout this summer have uh, have really been about. So the fact that, you know, this team personnel guy saying that makes 
add some more validity to all the trade rumors, all the stuff that's been coming out in recent weeks. So let me know what you guys think about that there. And finally, there's a lot of trade interest in all of our guys. We always say that means we have good players. As of now, there's nothing in the works to move anyone, but we are in a bit of a transition period and the roster is still taking shape. So that's basically a, you know, a calm, chill way of saying, you know, the guys that we aren't sure about the future, so not Scotty Barnes, not Brady Dick, not Jakob Pertl, they're not actively being directly shocked, right? They're not about to press the trade button to lock in a deal, sending Pascal to the Hawks, OG to the Knicks, whatever the heck reports are coming out there. But the team does have to figure out a direction. They are in transition with the guys that aren't fully signed in OG and Pascal especially. No mention of uh, Gary Trent Jr. there again, which I continue to find interesting. Masai Jerry, Bobby Webster, when talked about the future of this team, never seem to mention young player Gary Trent Jr., but I digress on that point. You know, other players, they're still potential to be shot. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about all this sort of news coming out here today. The Raptors continue to tease Raptors fans. We need to pick a direction. We need to figure out what's going on, whether it's trading guys, whether it's extending guys. We can't just go into next season not knowing what's going on and having potentially three of our starters as a free agent. So let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news. You guys are the best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're very close to 29,000 subs. And then we're officially on the quest to the milestone of 30K. But you guys are the best. I'm signing out. Cheers.